Welcome to the Ignited Recovery Podcast, a new way forward for anyone looking for answers but feeling left out. If you've been searching for empowerment, triumph, and purpose, you've found them right here. You won't hear the same solutions and you're not going to have any excuses to fall back on because Ignited Recovery allows heroes to rise and become their best selves. I'm Dr. Adi Jaffe, and I can't wait to be your guide on this journey. Are you ready to become an Ignited Hero? Whenever the middle of October gets here, I already start thinking about November and December because historically, right from around, right before Thanksgiving until after the new year, tends to be a pretty difficult time period for a lot of people that I work with over the last uh, number of decades. And so I'm all about preparation. I know you guys know that already, but I will start seeding little pieces uh, in order to help all of us get through those holidays unscathed, if you will, or at least to the best of my ability, unscathed. Um, and and so I'll, this is not the first time I'll talk about it, but the theme that I'm going to mention today has quite a bit to do with that and it'll apply regardless of sort of which which level you're at what length of time you've been with us so here's the topic the theme that i want to talk about today uh, and it, it starts out with perfectionism and the concept of being perfect uh, but i'm gonna i'm gonna put a little twist on it today given a conversation like i said i just had with one of our elite clients in the last couple of days and it's this how do you find the balance between perfectionism and complete procrastination and laziness. Um, a lot of you have already heard, and it's in the program, this concept of avoiding black and white thinking, right? This idea that I'm either perfect or I'm a failure. We talk about that a lot. Um, and I would argue that for me, and maybe for you already, but if not, and you're just kind of starting on this road, being able to make that shift, being able to understand how to move from, I must be perfect with everything that I do, no matter what it is, no matter what area of my life, no matter what part of my relationships, no matter what time period in my life, um, I have to be perfect or I can't do anything is a huge barrier, an incredible hurdle to doing anything, to forget success, to just moving forward, right? To establishing momentum. And that's actually where this conversation started just literally two nights ago with a client was he's going through massive changes in life in terms of addiction and things of that nature. Um, people, people can't believe the changes that have occurred in his life, but he's still stuck in his head with this idea that, okay, this has gone better. I'm not, I'm not mired in, in the depths of suffering anymore, but he still feels really hamstrung. He still feels stuck anytime there's a challenge in creating change. Now we have this program and he's got access to this program. And so in terms of how to deal with his addiction or the thoughts that led to his addiction and the anxieties and things like that, he's had guidance, but look, we don't have that in area, every area of life, right? It's not like every time you want to make a decision, some puppet pops up and says, hey, in this area of life, here are some great tips. And so what he's found is happening, and his wife is pregnant, which is one of the things that is causing a lot of anxiety right now, is whenever these massive changes in life happen, he freezes. It's really hard for him to make additional decisions. And... <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't want to have to go through this iteration where every single time he's got to begin a brand new program to learn how to deal with a whole new area of life. That's not what we want. And so what, what we ended up talking about quite a bit and what I want to talk about here today for you is how do you find that balance? How do you find the balance between thinking so hard and, and considering every option you can imagine and leaving no stone unturned? until you have the perfect answer, which is one extreme of this, and the other one, which is just doing nothing and not trying and not, you know, not progressing. I think that what ends up happening to a lot of us is it, it can be really easy to come up with a general answer for that question, but inevitably each one of us struggles with different issues and problems. And each one of us has different anxieties, stressors, um, old anchors, right? Beliefs that have been sitting with us. You've learned a lot of those for you that are holding you back. How many people, this thing that I'm talking about, this perfectionism or this need to get it exactly right every single time, um, 
comes up in areas around, let's say, relationships, right? Like I have to be amazing at this. Okay. How many of you feel that around work, let's say? So relationships, maybe not so much, but work, when you're at work, you just have to hit it out the park or you feel mm -hmm. terrible. Okay. Um, how many of you, let's say, let's move it to the area that we're here uh, primarily for right now around your mental health, your addiction, your daily functioning. Do you feel like, you know, I can, I can do my best at work or I can be pretty good around my relationships. When it comes to taking care of myself, I better get it right or else. So the reason I'm asking the question is it's not universal, right? But we all know that there are these areas where it's very difficult for us to, to be comfortable, to perform with ease, to, to kind of glide through life. I mean, I'll tell you just so I'm participating in this with you, like I do in, in many other ones. Like for me, money is one of those areas in life. Money is one of those areas. If I don't feel incredibly safe, like secure for the next six to 12 months or something along those lines, I get a lot of fear and anxiety still to this day. Um, and so we all have this in different areas. And sometimes, again, if you're like me, if you're like so many other people I work with, it becomes debilitating. Now, there's an email, I think, that is going out for most of you guys in a couple of days that you'll get. Um, I am a firm believer that these impulses are signals, these, these feelings, these emotions you feel, these fears around being imperfect or this idea of being hopeless and giving up on the other end. They are signals that we need to listen to. And the reason we need to listen to them is they are the best barometer. They're the best. It's like having, um, have you ever gone, gone to the beach and seen one of those people with the metal detectors kind of looking around for, uh, for coins, right? This is your internal coin finder. That's what it is. But it's so uncomfortable because everybody else in the world has told us over and over and over that if it's not perfect, don't even show it to me. Don't look at me. Don't talk about it. That we've, we've gotten to this place where we internalize and we repress and we, we run away from these feelings over and over and over and over in our life. And what I say in the email, what I'll say to you guys here today is they're never going to go away. I don't think these feelings ever go away. I don't think these, these internal compass sort of notions, these, uh, these intuitions disappear. In fact, what ends up happening is they get louder and louder and louder and louder, and they're going to they're gonna get broader and broader. So instead of showing up only at night when you go to sleep, they're going to show up repeatedly in life. And if you try to drown them out with drinking or using, they're, they're literally going to get louder, right? They will show up at every moment until eventually you succumb. And why I'm talking about this here today is I want to give you a choice. And that choice is you can decide at any moment to say, you know what, I'm done running. It's going to be uncomfortable. I get it. There are changes I'm going to have to make. Uh, I'm going to have to face my fears, right? But I'm done running, understanding that if I keep running, it's just going to get worse. It's in the moment between the decision to keep working so hard until you get it perfect, perfectly, and doing nothing because you can never do anything and you're hopeless. It's in, it's in the place between those two that we're going to try to meet. And there are other ways in which I've talked about this is 1% principle improvement, 1% improvement principle and things of that nature. But I want to be very, very precise about the way we talk about this one here today. No matter what it is in life, relationships, work, finances, home environment, career, um, family relationships. The challenge I want you to, to take on today is that the way to get from here to that goal, or at least close to that goal of perfectionism, is to repeatedly make mistakes. I just want to repeat that one more time. The way to get, I'm not saying you have to let go of the goal of getting really good at this or being near perfect at it, whatever it is that you're struggling with right now. But the way to get from here to there is to actively go after making the mistakes. Even that word failure, that word failure has this incredibly negative connotation for us. In reality, what I'm talking about is accepting at a very deep level that you will repeatedly try things that don't work, but that it's only through repeatedly trying things that don't work that you will have the opportunity to uncover the things that do. And what I want to give everybody here is to empower you all to trust deeply 
that you are smart enough, you're good enough, you have enough support, you have the resources to be able to tell the things that work from the things that don't work. And your job is not to stop failing and make mistakes. That cannot be your job. If you make that your job, you will be paralyzed. Your job is to tell apart the things that worked from the things that didn't work. And if you can do that, what will happen over time is you will amass a bigger and bigger toolkit of techniques, tools, relationships, um, ways to operate at work, ways to save money. Again, whatever it is in your specific area that provide you with the path to get where you're trying to go. Again, the principle is very different. So many of us don't want to get it wrong. This is the same reason I believe that a lot of us have, um, a lot of us have tried to deal with our addictions on our own. I know this for myself. Like I got myself to the point where I was smoking meth every single day, all day, literally all day until two, three days later, I would pass out and then just replay the cycle. And when I think about it over and over, I remember feeling deeply estranged from my parents when I was a kid, like a teenager. My dad left us. He cheated on my mom. It caused a rift. That's sort of like part of the core of what started the problems. And part of my notion was I'm going to find a solution out of this. I'm going to, I'm going to separate myself from them. I'm going to become independent from them. So I just tried things. Now, one of the things that I ended up trying, I, I became very rebellious. But one of the things that I ended up trying was selling drugs. It was weed to start out, but why they had money control over me. So by selling drugs, I got, I took away the money control. Does that make sense? It worked. The problem was I was absolutely in a place in my head where I had to solve all of this myself. So I never talked to anybody about the path I was taking. I never, I never sought advice. I never, I never asked questions. I just found solution after solution. And if you think, Think about it in a very bizarre sort of, uh, I don't know how many people read Kafka, but like in a Kafka-esque sort of nightmarish way, it all worked. By the time I was done, I was making more than enough money to support myself. I paid for everything on my own. Uh, I didn't meet, meet my parents at all. I actually didn't talk to them at all, ever. It worked. I completely separated from my family. It's just that the end goal where I ended up was not exactly somewhere I was very happy being in. We all experiment. That's what we do in our life. We experiment to get ourselves the results. What we have now that is different, hopefully, than for many of you, what you've had before, is we have an environment, a community, where we don't have to do this alone anymore. And if you have that, if you feel like you've landed and there's a place where you can say things that you might be scared to say to your family, you might be scared to say your husband or wife because you're not quite sure that they're right, this is the place to test them. It doesn't have to stay in this environment. When you get good at this, you can start sharing it with anybody out there. Right? I can talk to my wife about this stuff. I can talk to my parents about this stuff, my mom who's still alive. I can talk to friends about this stuff now, but that took me years. The first thing that I needed to test internally was that I wasn't, I'll, I'll use the, more clinically uh, or the more um, socially correct term that I wasn't a POS, right? I wasn't a terrible human being. And that's why I had bad ideas sometimes, or that's why I was messing up. And that's the deviation for me between the work that we do and what you hear a lot of times out there. A lot of times you hear this idea that the reason you make mistakes is because you're an addict or an alcoholic. I don't think that's true at all. The reason you make mistakes is because you're human. We all make mistakes. Somewhere along the lines, we were taught that that's not okay. And I want to shift that for you. Thomas Watson has this, uh, the, the uh, founder of IBM has, uh, has this quote I've heard many, many, many times, but it says, you know, if you want to succeed more and faster, double your failure rate. That was, that's a very antithetical way to think about the world than the way I think most of us grew up. And so... I don't want you to let go of the concept of, I mean, you can call it perfectionism, but of being great, of being doing great things, doing amazing things, being really successful. I don't want you to let go of that. What I want you to understand is that the path to that 
is not one of learn, study, try. I mean, learn, study, imagine, think, plan over and over and over and over and over until you have the perfect answer. Then you fire a shot. That's just not the path. The path to doing it is just to committing that no matter what comes next, you will get up, you will learn from the experience, you will adjust if necessary, unless it was really successful and then you don't adjust, right? We actually learn more from failures than we do from success because when something succeeds, you don't really know why it worked. You just know that you did something and it worked. It could have been chance, it could have been luck, it could have been people around you, it could have been what you did. But you learn, you get up and you learn over and over, right? But here's the thing, listen, it's going to take a bunch of time. It's probably going to take longer than you want it to. It's not going to look perfect. It's going to take you longer than you want it to. You're going to make a ton of mistakes. And there's going to be a bunch of times where you run into a dead end and you got to erase everything you just did and start from another point that you haven't tested yet. But you know what I'm going to find in the end? Near guarantee for every single person on this, you will have solved this maze. And so that's what I want you to understand. You're doing here when it comes to whatever problem you came here for drugs alcohol porn sex gambling i don't care what it is right that's what you're doing here but that's what you're doing in every other area of life and if we think of it that way then every clash every mishap every slip up every failure as jen mentioned every one of these mistakes that previously you believed meant i'm just not good enough to get this done simply means I just have an opportunity to learn about another way that things don't work. And if, if, you can, if you can adopt this way of thinking in life, I don't believe there's anything that you can't achieve. Anything. One of the examples for me personally, and I'll end with this, three years ago, we started Ignited. I'd been running a treatment center and I'd been running groups or doing individual coaching. Well, at the time it was literally therapy. I was an intern, psychology intern. Um, I think when I opened up Ignited, that had been going on for about eight years. That model was the model I knew. You open up a rehab or you go see clients or you sit in a room with people. But I had this idea. It's too expensive. It takes too much time for people to get to me. How do I do it differently? And I came up with this. I knew nothing about production. I knew nothing about web information products. I knew nothing about creating courses. I knew nothing. I can guarantee you that if I spent all the time I wanted to learn how to produce a really good online course and sound good and look good, et cetera, Ignited wouldn't be a thing right now. It wouldn't. I'd still be learning. What I did instead was literally on the same laptop that I'm talking to you on right now, the camera is different because we have a better camera now, but on the same laptop that we did right now, I spent th six months creating a PowerPoint. I knew how to do that. I've been a professor for eight years and I asked people if they wanted this help. And there were seven people the first time I did this, seven people. And we did it for two months. We, we did this, the thing that you now take as a course. It's now three and a little bit years later. And we're going through this exercise. There's a huge board in front of me and I, I'm spending hours every day essentially redoing this entire program. We're bringing a cinematographer, we're bringing in lighting. We're doing all this stuff that I didn't even know I could have done or I should have done or anybody would have wanted me to do three and a half years ago. I didn't know it existed. I, I, know, I didn't know this part of the world. But in the last three years, I mean, there's 20 some of you on here right now. In the last three years, 600 people did the thing that I, that I created three years ago. And every single one of those who paid for it then will get the new thing. So I'm, it's not like it's not like as you keep moving forward in life, you have to write off what happened before, right? As you learn, as you get better, your past successes don't write themselves away. Just because you get better and you improve doesn't mean that what you've done before doesn't count. You can just keep getting better and better and better. And the, the place you will end up in three, four, five, seven years, 10 years from now, you can't imagine. You cannot imagine that place right now because you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the experience, you don't have the perspective to understand how far you can go. But you won't get there if you don't get started. And so I want to open this up. And what I'd love to, some of you shared about the areas of life where this has been a struggle for you. And maybe one of the things that we can do here is for anybody who's willing to share, 
bring some of those specific struggles. Here's the area of my life where I'm struggling right now. And here is the place where my perfectionism or my lack of uh, belief in self or motivation or hope, uh, hope for a better future are kind of standing in, in my way. I would love to see some of that because no, I promise you this, no matter what area of life this is affecting you in, somebody else is having the exact same difficulty, either in the same area or a different area of life. Thank you for tuning in to the Ignited Heroes Recovery Podcast. I really hope you found the information here useful and that we'll see you back here next week. And look, I want to make sure that this podcast is the most useful it can be for you. So please let me know by emailing info at ignited.com if there are any specific topics or questions you'd like to have addressed. As usual, if you like this episode, I would love for you to leave us a five-star review and rating. Thanks and see you next week.